Hey guys, um, the, the topic this week for the writing video is going to be word choice. So word choice is a very common question on the SAT writing test. Um, basically, it'll just give you a word and um, it'll give you three options to replace it or just leave it in. And the point of these questions is to just um, have you pick the right word for the passage. So I'm going to go through three examples today. It should be pretty short because these questions are pretty easy. They don't require like too much thinking. So yeah, um, so I split this into two different categories, which is specific word choice. So these questions will just um, ask you to choose the best word. And um, yeah, the other type of question is style and tone word choice. So they're pretty similar. Um, yeah, you'll just see like a little bit of the differences as I go through the questions, but yeah. So specific word choice, they'll ask you to choose the best word. Um, generally, all the choices will have like pretty similar meanings, but very different connotations, which is kind of like the deeper meaning behind the word. So yeah, it's a um, very important to have a good understanding of like which connotation would work best in the passage. So the basic strategy here, you first want to read the passage and like at the point where the word is, you want to figure out like what is the sentence trying to get across? Um, like, what should the word mean? What should the meaning of the word be? And the tone of the passage. So I gave a couple examples here. Scholarly, excited, somber, stuff like that. Um, if you don't really know what tone is, you should probably research that. But it's basically like what the author, like the author's attitude towards the subject, the towards the subject at that point. So yeah, then um, using the tone of the passage and like context clues around the word, you want to figure out what the meaning of the word is supposed to be and kind of what the connotation should be. And also, um, you want to find out the author's like opinion. So here it's just positive, neutral, or negative. It could be strongly positive, strongly negative. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, so next, you want to read all the four answer choices and just like um, define it in your head and also say the connotation. So I'll go through that in the next question. So using like, like if a word has a negative connotation and it means like the right thing, but in the, the passage has like a positive tone, then that's probably not the correct word because the tone uh, doesn't match the passage, even though the meaning does. So yeah, if you don't know the meaning of a specific word, just use process of elimination with the other ones to see if that one works. So I say, I'd say just like, like 90% of the time, it's just going to be the word that like, if you read through it, it sounds smoothly, it doesn't, or it sounds smooth, it doesn't really sound weird. So yeah. Um, so this first question, this is um, from, I believe it's the passage used as a, uh, used in the practice test last week. And I might have gone over this during the Zoom, but I don't know, I'll go over this again. So it says, Brancusi in turn sued the U.S. government aiming to score recognition of his sculpture as art. So you can see here at 30, score is underlined. And um, on the right answer choice 30 here, there's no question description. It's just, it gives you the four choices. So this is um, typical of specific word choice questions. You're just supposed to like interpret this as meaning like which word should be here. So here are the steps I used to answer this question. Um, but I'll just explain it here. So, uh, reading this passage, it's like kind of like an explain uh, an explanatory tone and pretty formal. So you want to have like the word here should be like also with a formal tone. Um, another thing I found is that it's like neutral. Like the author doesn't seem to be pretty like positive or negative about it. It's kind of just a description. So you don't want to go with the word that's too extreme or has like an extremely positive or negative connotation. So you want to read the words around 30. So aiming to score recognition. So um, right here, it's talking about the lawsuit against the US government. So you can see that um, the word at 30 should mean something like obtain, I guess. And if you look at all these choices, they all have a pretty similar meaning. So score, secure, land, and gather up. They pretty much mean to like obtain or gain something. So the most important thing here is the connotation or like the more specific meaning of the word, I guess. 
So score here, um, score means to get like a victory or like a triumph in something. You, uh, you usually talk about it in like sports. Um, secure is to kind of just get something. This is pretty basic. Um, land is, it means something similar to secure, but it kind of is used um, like the company landed a contract. And the last one, gather up. A uh, gather up is, that's pretty informal. So you can kind of eliminate this one because it's pretty like informal tone, whereas the passage has a pretty formal tone. So you can see um, I went through the three choices I had left, which were score, secure, and land. And I found that um, B secure is the best choice just because the connotation most matches what I'm looking for. So if I read through it with secure in place, it um, it sounds pretty good. So Baron Cousy in turn sued the US government aiming to secure recognition of his sculpture's art that has a, um, the best connotation, I guess. Yeah. So this next one, it's an adjective instead of a verb. So um, in contrast to the last question, but it's pretty much the same step. So according to a recent study, the average CEO at a large corporation in the U.S. made 271 times more money than the company's classic American worker. So classic really sticks out here. It um, doesn't make sense, really. Like you can the like a really, really general meaning of classic might fit. but That's probably not what we're looking for. So I'm going to look at the tone again. So it's a neutral opinion with a pretty scholarly and formal tone. So, of course, you don't want to choose anything that's too informal or doesn't really match up with the other type of language that the author uses. Um, so when where it says classic, you can kind of understand that the comparison of salaries here is since it's talking about the average CEO makes 271 times more money than and then it should just be like an average worker. So. Yeah, average is the best, or something that means pretty close to average is the best choice. So C, typical, is the best. If you look at the other ones, they just don't really match up with what we're looking for. All right. So this um, second type is style and tone word choice. So it's almost the same thing, except it there is going to be like a question where it says, which choice best maintains the style and tone of the passage, um, as opposed to just providing the answer choices and nothing else. So um, I'm going to say these questions, they focus just a little bit more on like the tone of the, uh, the answer choice rather than like the meaning, which was like kind of the focus of the specific word choice questions. So um, we can just read the sentence around this answer choice. He was the target of a long running and long frustrated FBI investigation during his career as an imposter. And he made a break for it from police custody twice before he was 21 years old. So um, the the word in here or the phrase made a break for it is very informal. Um, also, it just doesn't really make sense. Made a break for it from police custody. That's way too wordy. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't really make sense here. So which choice best maintains the style and tone of the passage? So most passages you're going to see are going to have a formal tone and yeah, formal tone and style. So you want to choose something that is like, you know, not over the top or doesn't sound too like casual, like um, like an idiom or something like made a break for it. That's that's a little too casual. So um, we'll look at the other choices. So there's took flight, escaped and flew the coop. So took flight and flew the coop are both kind of just colloquial sayings. Um, they seem a little too informal. So I think escaped is the best choice just because it gets some meaning across. Like he got away from the police, but it doesn't really add any fluff. And yeah, just it is a little, it's a lot more efficient than the other choices. So yeah, C is going to be the correct answer here. Um, so if you look at this, like the last thing I put here, I put generally choices that are colloquial sayings are incorrect because they're too casual. So that's pretty much going to, that's going to be correct every time. Like, this reasoning you just want to go with something that's like gets the point across and has like a pretty formal connotation so that's all for it today um i included six practice questions with the answers at the bottom these ones should be pretty easy just follow the steps i talked about and you should be good yeah thanks for watching